I hate having to make a video about this, but with everybody talking about it recently, I decided to do a deep dive into if there's any validity in this argument. And the argument is that this year's March Madness tournament is all rigged. Now, why would it be rigged? Well, of course, as most people know, it is the last year of Coach K, who is the coach of the Duke Blue Devils. Everyone is saying that they're rigging the tournament for him to win, and we're going to discuss 10 reasons as to why that might be. So what's going on, guys? SMH Super Mario Hoops back with some more hoops, and today we're going to be talking about 10 possible reasons as to why this year's March Madness tournament might eventually be rigged. You know, we haven't seen the Final Four play out yet, so this could just be a video all for nothing. But if it does happen this way, I think a lot more people are going to be taking this a lot more seriously. So without further ado, let's hop into the 10. So starting off, let's look at the teams who are in it. So the teams in the Final Four this year are Duke, Kansas, UNC, and Villanova. Now, if you go back to their first time winning with Coach K, that being Duke, the teams that made the Final Four were Duke, check, Kansas, check, North Carolina, check, and UNLV. Now, UNLV is taking the spot of Villanova, but those three teams all making it to the Final Four hasn't happened since that year, and it's a pretty big coincidence that it's happening again. Of course, Duke beat UNLV, Kansas beat UNC, and then in the championship, Duke beat Kansas, which is very well possible again this year. Now, of course, Duke would have to play North Carolina first, and it would be flipped with Kansas having to play the replacement for UNLV from 1991, that being Villanova, but it is still very weird. The second reason was in 1991, that was the first year that a 15 seed upset a two seed, and that made shockwaves about how nobody that low has ever made it that far in the tournament, when 15 seed Richmond beat the two seed Syracuse. And we'll get into Syracuse a little bit later, but for this year, Remember that St. Peter's team? You know, the one that set the bar as well as the furthest a seed that low has gone? And they got all the way to the Elite Eight after they beat Purdue. The third reason, and probably the most controversial reason of these 10, I will admit, surrounds Roy Williams. Now, this is his first year not coaching, and he even blew up a little bit on social media as a cheerleader for UNC beating UCLA as it's his first year gone. And he made the Final Four that year in 1991, but not with the team he was most recently a part of, but instead Kansas. And when he made it that year, they were the lowest of the four Final Four teams, which North Carolina is this year. Factor in that Kansas is also in the Final Four. The fourth reason is that last year the tournament Final Four took place in Indianapolis. Not only has Duke won the last two titles when it was in Indianapolis, but their first title also came the year both in Indianapolis and the year after Indianapolis. This year is a year after Indianapolis, just like the year Christian Leitner hit the iconic game winner for Duke, leading them to win it all. Number five is the rematch. Duke in the 1991 Final Four won a rematch off the previous year over the then undefeated UNLV team, led by Larry Johnson and Greg Anthony. This year, everyone is hyping up the rematch between them and UNC from earlier this year, which again is also an age-old rivalry. The sixth reason is sequencing. The last two champions before Duke's first title had won their first ever championship in those years as well, Michigan in 1989 and UNLV in 1990. If Duke were to win again this year in their last title in the Coach K era, it would come after two more first-time champions, Virginia in 2019 and Baylor in 2021. Of course, this should be obvious for the last two teams, but all four of those teams to this day have only won those championships listed. Reason number seven, stealing the thunder. The last time Duke won the NCAA championship was 2015 against Wisconsin. Now, this is a game that many people like to say was rigged or one-sided because of everything extraordinary that was done by Wisconsin to overcome the undefeated, overwhelming favorites that year, the Kentucky Wildcats, led by Carl Anthony Towns. Some similar reactions came out with Duke throughout this tournament, and the one to note the most is against Arkansas. Because one could compare the hype of this year's Gonzaga team 
in a way to the same wavelength as that 2015 Kentucky squad, as the refs heavily favorited both of them a little bit in the tournament in most people's opinion. The number eight reason is the coaching ladder. The most wins of any coach ever in tournament history goes in the order as listed. Coach K, Roy Williams, Dean Smith, and Jim Boheim. The top three coached by Duke, Kansas, and UNC, and also UNC for Dean Smith. Coincidence? And then the reason you don't see Syracuse for Jim Boheim is because, well, they were terrible all year. But you know who they lost to in the ACC? It was Duke. And remember earlier when I said you'd hear about Syracuse once again? Well, they had a bad season this year, just like the 1991 disappointment as a two seed losing in the first round. Number nine is more rivalries. Arguably the second biggest rival behind UNC to Duke would be Michigan State. And the last time that Duke beat them in the tournament, they won it all in 2015, in the final four specifically. They beat Michigan State in the round of 32 this year in the 2-7 matchup. And the 10th reason is milestones for marketing. In 2010, Coach K passed a thousand games coach. Duke won it all. In 2015, Coach K surpassed a thousand games won. Duke won it all. This year, he surpassed a hundred tournament games won. And if that trend keeps up, I think you know what the outcome's going to be. So now let's talk a little bit about the outcome. What is going to happen if this is so-called rigged? Well, my expectation would be that Duke is going to beat North Carolina. They'll get revenge from earlier in the season. Kansas is going to beat Villanova as Villanova is kind of just the filler team at this point. And then Duke is going to win it all over Kansas, just like Coach K's first ever title year in 1991. And if all that happens in the way I just listed, I think we got to start looking at this a little bit more. Now, you could argue maybe some other years could have been rigged in certain ways. You could even argue that in 2015, why would Duke win it and why would they so-called rig it in their favor as opposed to Kentucky, who went undefeated all year, and Wisconsin, who would have been that underdog team that shut them down. Or you could look at all the hype that they had in the 2014 tournament when they were led by Jabari Parker and they lost in a big disappointment very early in the first round. So there are some valid arguments as to why certain tournaments that are called rigged, maybe they weren't really rigged. I mean, you think someone would know about it by now, right? But of course, not a lot of times is there a season where a guy like Coach K is retiring. So that's why people are talking about it. And especially the way that they close the season, kind of building up the anticipation. Many people think that they're going to pull off some supreme upset this year and surprise everybody. And so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think that this year is rigged? And maybe if Duke loses in the final four or they lose in the championship, maybe if Villanova surprises Kansas, North Carolina surprises Duke, then none of this was even meant to be and it wasn't supposed to be rigged at all. Personally for me, I don't care who wins the championship. The only thing I'm worried about is that hopefully Villanova can beat Kansas because then I will win money. I wouldn't say it's necessarily rigged, at least up to this point. I think there's just a lot of coincidences. I do think it is a little bit crazy when you factor in the three teams that made it back in 1991, his first title, they're all in it once again. Just the only difference is UNLV replaced by Villanova. The 15 seed argument is pretty interesting to me as well. And then of course, Syracuse, you can even look at that as another incentive as to why it potentially could be reminiscent of that 1991 season a little bit and the good times that it had at the beginning to the end for Coach K. But we will see because there have been some games this year, I won't specify which ones, but I do think the refs had a big influence on the outcome. Games within the tournament, of course, not necessarily regular season. And if we start to see that, especially in the final four in Duke's favor, then maybe we can have a bigger discussion about this. Until then, let's just see how it plays out. You never know. But that's basically going to do it for me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Check me out on Twitter. You can check me out on Instagram as well. All in the description below. But I think that's going to do it for me. So again, thank you guys for watching and I'm out. Peace.